even though this is obviously a story in the US, um, women all around the world, and, and especially here in Australia, um, can take enormous amounts um, out of the interview. Uh, she's incredibly strong um, and she lights the way, I think, um, for women to tell their story. Uh, I think for many, many years, part of the big issue has been women don't feel comfortable, don't feel confident, and don't feel that the system is going to support them. I think that she, she, has, she has paved the way for women to do that, to have confidence. Um, but also, I think women in Australia should watch this to know what courage it takes, to know what you're going to go through, but also does the system need to change and can women bring about change in this system? Can they um, go to their local members and say, okay, we want mandatory sentencing for sexual assaults? I think that has to happen in this country. I, I think that for women to feel safer, um, to feel like they do have a voice, to feel like they're not Chanel in that situation, there should be changes to mandatory sentencing. There needs to be a very clear and strong message sent to the public and to men that if you do this, you're going to spend time in jail. Uh, and that I hope comes out of this story. How do we as men talk to women mm -hmm. like yourself? Um, how do we respect it? Mm -hmm. um, and what lessons can we learn out of this? Yeah, I think it's important just to be willing to engage in the first place to not step away and say that's too daunting or too graphic or too intimidating to even engage with, um, to be willing to come into the conversation. Secondly, to listen, especially without judgment. I think many victims feel like if we come to you with a story, we're sort of giving you this burden that you may not really know how to grapple with. But if you sit there and say, thank you, for entrusting me mm. with this. You know, it's like, then the story becomes a gift and you're honoring her ability to come to you and trust you with all that she's been carrying. And you can say, I'm willing to carry this alongside you. If you hear something like a disrespectful comment against women, instead of brushing it aside, confront it. You know, all these tiny things add up. So hold your friends accountable to say, that's not cool. It's not that funny. How do we keep up with what's happened here? How do we make sure that what you went through and what they've been through makes a difference? Mm. I would just say, don't turn away. Be willing to confront the uncomfortable things. Hear her when she's trying to speak to you, don't dismiss these like mistakes. Um, I feel like we have a tendency to downplay violence, to call them sloppy miscommunications when really they are crimes. We find ways to rationalize violence and we should not have a tolerance for it any longer. One of the, one of the really a valuable things that I found in talking to her was that I I struggled in, in as a man being able to talk to her about what happened to her. I felt uncomfortable about it and I felt a little bit ashamed, even though I obviously wasn't responsible, but as a man for this happening to her. And I think that if as a woman um, she can she can give some insight into how we, we speak to each other, um, how we recognise what you went through, um, but also um, to be able to speak to, to other men and go, this is just not on, look at this woman's story. This is not just a night, this is not just a party, this is a lifetime of, of conflict and, and sadness and, um, and, and real anger and, and really heightened emotions that you're leaving this, this, this person with. Think about what you're doing. And if you don't, then there's going to be huge ramifications. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.